Welcome back to Monroe Live. Now, we are here today at the North American Auto Show and we are in the Michigan Pure Opportunity booth. Justine Johnson, yes. Chief Mobility Officer, State of Michigan. Now, I have to ask you, uh, that's a very bureaucratic name <laughs> or a very bureaucratic title. What does it actually mean to you? What does the office mean for the state of Michigan? Yeah, um, great question. Um, and I love the title, Chief Mobility Officer. Um, one, I think this is about thinking about mobility across the state of Michigan and really, one, strengthening our work within the mobility space, really thinking about workforce development, um, really thinking about bringing the people and industry along when we talk about mobility across the state. Um, I think it's about access and opportunity and really working closely and collaboratively with our state partners um, to advance goals around sustainability, to advance goals around equity, and to advance goals around transportation and mobility for all. So to me, that's where this office shines. Um, we are really at the epicenter of mobility in the state of Michigan and really wanting to continue to do more work in this space. Now, when we're saying at the epicenter <laughs> of mobility in the state of Michigan, that's actually kind of unique the physical location where we are at in this building. <laughs> Behind us, yes. we have all the cars that are on display. That is the what. What are we producing? What are we sending out to a customer? What are we providing? But here, behind us, we have the how. That section of the building is all of our vendors and also university representation. So the vendors are developing the how. The university is the who. The product is our what, but yet here we are the where. Here in the state of Michigan, bringing all this stuff together. Um, that's a big challenge. Um, where do you feel that we are at today? What are some successes that we have had that we can really hang our head on so far? Yeah, I mean, I've been four weeks into the role, so very early in, but something I think, you know, in my quick four weeks here, have seen a lot of ways in which this office and as well as the state of Michigan has shown up. Um, one, I think, you know, we have the Fresh Coast Corridor, which is really focusing on electric mobility and specifically e-boats. Um, and we think about sustainability from a, um, a new pathway, thinking about the maritime industry. That's something that's really important and um, we should continue to do work in this particular space. Um, when we think about uh, a number of different work in terms of partnerships with universities. Um, we have shown up and, and really have partnered with universities. We have a, actually a, a grant platform called um, the Michigan Mobility Funding Platform, which really provides uh, funding um, across the state for different emerging companies to really think about real world deployments and as well as test sites. So I think it's work like this that is coming out of the Office of Future Mobility and Electrification that is extremely important to continuing to advance and bring together the who, the what, and the how. Um, I think at the end of the day, we have to think about the users and making sure that they have um, really strong experiences, especially when we talk about access to new modes um, of mobility and really bringing that all together in a cohesive fashion. So we know where we're at now. There are some existing programs that we have, but being new to this office, I'm assuming that you want to bring your own take and your own spin. What are some of the goals going forward beyond what we currently have in place? Yeah. Um, great question. And first, I do want to say, uh, I just want to bring it back because you brought it here first. I want to yep. bring it back for a second. Um, in 2022, uh, at the Detroit Auto Show, so literally here, this is before I started, um, we announced uh, something, and this is uh, Governor Whitmer and as well as the Office of Future Mobility and Electrification, announced something called um, the Michigan or My Future Mobility Plan. And essentially, these are uh, the, the principles and goals to really thinking about electrification and mobility through um, expanding opportunities opportunities within the industry, workforce development, um, as well as leading policy innovation and really thinking about safe and sustainable and green um, transportation infrastructure. So we've already kicked that off already, mm -hmm. which is exciting. Um, we're literally one year to date from what we announced last year. Um, I think with that also being said, um, we also on our website, if you go check out our website, uh, we do have a dashboard where we have been tracking our goals to date. Um, so I'd highly encourage folks to take a look at the website as well to look at our dashboard um, to see how we are tracking along the lines of those three pillars and 11 goals to support the work. But what I am also looking forward to advancing into this conversation is really think around top, thinking about and engaging on topics around mobility equity and making sure that we provide um, accessible resources um, for people to have access to new modes.
modes of transportation, um, and that includes whether that's the private automobile, a shared automobile, connected automobile, autonomous, um, that could be an e-bike, an e-scooter, and again, as I mentioned with Fresh Coast Corridor, really thinking about our maritime and our blue highway system. So that's something that I'm really passionate about. In addition to that, I think about the people who are going to support this work. You talked about the auto, the cars behind us, and you talked about the suppliers, but it's really the people who continue to make this, this work thrive and happen. And so how do we make sure that um, those who work within the auto industry right now can continue to see themselves and also transition into the mobility industry, broadly speaking? I think that is something that's really important to me um, and making sure that people um, can continue to be a part of the mobility industry, especially as it's expanding to electrification and new forms of mobility and move, new form factors. So that's something that I'm very passionate about um, incorporating as well. And like how I said, equity is very big. We talk about EV charging infrastructure. That is a space where I am very excited as an EV owner. Um, I am often looking for um, places to charge. And so how do we think about expanding that? How do we think about that equitably across the state? Um, I think we're at such a great opportunity um, to really have this moment in time where we're not only just talking about the what, but we're talking about the, the, the pathway in which people will travel in the future today and also um, tomorrow as well. So I'm excited about that. How people are traveling in the future. Now I have, I'm a little um, judgmental on self-driving okay. technology, but for me, I drive a long distance and I enjoy driving. But I have a friend who's working in that and I was questioning him. I said, well, think about it. If I go home to my house and I bought a bunch of mulch, I want to drive into my backyard to drop off the mulch. How do I tell the car to go into my backyard, not to go into the garage? And he says, well, you're not thinking about this the right way. We are thinking of vehicles that never leave the street, mm -hmm. that are shared driving, yeah. self-driving, that can move it. And that is a part of the mix. Yeah. There is a certain customer, there's a certain user that that is what yes. works for them. Yeah. So trying to understand that there is no one size fits all. Yeah that we're trying to blend across the entire state and everyone's individual needs. And working now is how in 40 years, we can have elderly people who may not be able to drive who can still get around, which is a problem that we normally have today. So when you're trying to plan, you're not just planning for the immediate benefit, which unfortunately a lot of OEMs and a lot of suppliers are looking for the next quarter. How are they going to continue to make profits so they, they can continue to exist? You're looking at a structure and a system that is going to set us up for a century. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a big ask yeah. <laughs> and it's normally a much slower process, but we need to try and move as quickly as we can. Yeah. So in doing this, how do you measure success? Yeah. If something is working, how can you really hold on to it and say, yes, we have it, let's move forward because we can't just rest on our laurels and stop there. But what are successes that you want to be able to measure going forward. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, as you mentioned, no, like one size doesn't fit all, right? Mm -hmm. And every user has different needs. Um, I think we do have to think about shared mobility and you started to talk about that, especially when we talk about um, the future of autonomous vehicles. We have to think about how many people can actually utilize those types of vehicles and they have different needs. Whether that's someone in a wheelchair, whether that's someone who is, again, traveling as a minor, there are all of these different needs and we have to take all of those things into consideration. But when I think about success, I think about opportunity areas that are repeatable. Um, so it's not just something that we did in one place at one time. How do we scale those pilots, those projects, and those programs across the state so that there is, again, a comprehensive approach to uh, mobility and innovation? I think that is something that is key. Um, I also think about the people in which we are serving, right? And, and they, they, in many ways, the riders or the customers, making sure that um, I think a successful outcome is that people can connect to their places of work. People can get to their families. Um, people are traveling in a safer uh, way than how they've been doing now. And I think safety is also a big part of this conversation as well. Um, when people are able to get up and get into a different mode and, and different modes of transportation and know that they're gonna get to their destination safely and those who are outside of the vehicles are getting to their destination safely. That is a win, that is a success. And I think every life, we should not lose lives on our streets anymore. Um, and we really have to be very intentional about making sure that safety is a, is a key priority. So that's safety. And again, how do we think about scaling across the state? Um, I'm always big if it's working somewhere and we're doing it great, how do we share those lessons across the state? How do we think about opportunity areas for implementation? 
Well, thank you very yes. much, Justine. Thank you. Uh, I hope thank that you. you have a good day, and actually multiple days. You'll yes. be here all week. <laughs> I am. Uh, I, I hope you get some rest. Thank you. So, thank you for watching from Monroe Live, and have a good day. Thank you.